services that are now only now becoming good services. But if we are talking about ecosystem services, we are almost inevitably also talking about rights. And that brings me to the question now what follows from all of this. If we do not have private property rights established by formal law, we cannot apply all my face models. Well, that's pretty clear, but then what? We concentrate on those people who have acknowledged rights. We try to establish pro private property rights everywhere. Or we try to at least clarify all types of rights everywhere. Or we change the approach and try to understand the current local situation and what, is on, what goes on there and what is at stake and who is debating what and who is conceptualizing what in which way. And jointly search for different approaches to move beyond the private marketplace model. And this is, I would say, about putting people in the picture and that we've heard in very many sessions over and over again. The idea of expert top-down mathematical formulas and their role, and they can play a role, versus integrative, participative. And I think that's a nice tendency we're seeing that a lot of these models actually allow to combine both. And that we might start out with one and then integrate the other and move on. One question is, are we asking the right questions? And I think in very many situations we are, but in many situations our questions are maybe slightly too narrow or maybe, as I tried to illustrate with the property rights, maybe not taking advantage of the full scope of possibilities. There were a lot of very nice and very illustrative examples of the importance of language and of framing so that, for example, I hope I don't mess up the countries, but I think it was South Africa where biodiversity was a no-go in a certain policy setting for a high percentage. Conservation was not the approach, it was rather the importance to people, the availability, the access. In the context with engineers, they would talk about ecosystem services, talk about system services, and that makes a huge difference already. There was an example of if you show the Finance Ministry a map of biodiversity, well, they don't really, uh, they don't really care, but if you show them a map of mines versus fresh water availability, they immediately get the picture. And there were some pretty interesting examples on 3D modeling in Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands, where people, local people were building these, these models themselves and then I did both. With, with the help of, of NGO and, and facilitators, but and then identifying the resources, etc., and this actually cat, capturing the interest of, of the policymakers at the regional, provincial level as well. So I'm glad Steve has done a very good job of highlighting this already, but I'd like to add a couple of, of, of more points. There is definitely policy demand for scientific information at this moment. Regard to these ecosystem terms. We've seen that very clearly in the EU, but I think we've heard several examples from other places as well. We've heard that TEAM and this whole idea opens the door to other sectors beyond the environmental sector, so there is maybe a, a window open there. I think there was a lot of agreement that we can start pragmatically with what we or you or whoever has, and but that it's very important to communicate the uncertainties involved. So we can start with this margin of error of 92%, but let's tell people that it's there and what other uncertainties there might be. We have a very diverse and functioning network, and I hope this improves and grows now. It's one of the big intentions we had with this conference. There is an agreement on the need to involve key stakeholders. And that leads me directly to the challenges. I think what has come out very clearly, as Steve said, involved the social scientists, so the governance context conditions are quite decisive and understanding them and how to interact with them is a big important point. There's the question of what is the added value of team as opposed to general ecosystem service assessment or, or other approaches. How implementation oriented are we in our research, if we speak as researchers, and how science based are we if we speak as, as policy makers? 
the need to, at least every once in a while, keep a critical distance and step back and reflect on what we're doing and, and, and how we're communicating and are we, are we making clear our assumptions, etc. I think there's big potential, and that has been voiced in several sessions, um, talking more about what works and what does not work and exchanging on that. There are clear windows of opportunity, and I'd like to take one that caught my attention. The recent flooding in Bangkok, there is now, of course, a lot of need to act, and there are some, some plans on the table how to improve this with the traditional, more technology-oriented approach. But are there new system-based alternatives? Are we, as a community, able to place them on the table quickly enough and detailed enough so that policymakers can be convinced? There are some very sketchy points on how to do tea, but I think it's important and that has shown up here in several parts to start and get with policy, so not undertake this as a research effort loosely, but understand what the decision-making context and, and challenges and come back to that. Involve stakeholders, so we agree on the need to involve them, but do we actually involve them and how do we involve them? And we have some Jillian smiling, some examples of very heavy involvement, so there the challenge is to see can we downsize this to have the same benefits with not monthly conferences of three hours, but still get this input. Look at the full range of values and options. Incorporate the underlying ecology. Steve has made this point beautifully. If we can't do that because we're doing a scoping study or we don't have the data, at least communicate the uncertainties that are underlying. Begin with what we have and set out an agenda to improve on the way. Also beautifully made by, by Steve. And my final slide, the way forward, some homework. So for the policy makers, I would say, wonderful to have you. I would like to ask you to ask more questions in the future, both in conferences but also outside, to challenge researchers more to address your questions and to reach out beyond the environmental sector and, and signal back you know, what is needed there and what is helpful. For practitioners, NGOs, policy support institutions, a main issue is to push for the integration of stakeholders and also to facilitate and allow this. And then of course you as in between us, both the policymaker and the researcher points apply to you to a certain extent as well. And for research, I think yeah, it's integrating the social sciences into the picture. Listen to policymakers and stakeholders, so don't only claim it's important to have them. Critically reflect your assumptions, that's a point been, been illustrated very nicely as well and to communicate the uncertainties and the different implications for different stakeholders. Okay, so this is what we have pulled together. Now this slide here is open and blank to add further points to these ends that we might have forgotten.